Welcome back to Community Conversations. I'm your host, Steve Mantis, and my guest today is Brian McKinnon, City Councilor for Thunder Bay from the Red River Ward. So, Brian, we just ended the last little <coughs> episode. For the first time, you've retired as a teacher, mm -hmm. and you've been advised to run. You've run for City Council 2006, and you won. Yep. What was it like then? Oh my gosh, what well, happens? That's right. <laughs> what happens now? <laughs> what happens now? <laughs> right. It's, it's like the movie, The Candidate, right? Right. But I, uh, I had lots of friends who were helping me out. And uh, I will say this, that when I uh, got on, there was a big change in council that year. Mm -hmm. uh, I forget the number, but there were about eight of us were brand new. So, but there were some still old timers, if I can use that word. I hate to say that. And Lynn Peterson was the mayor then? Or That's right. Okay. Yes, Lynn was the mayor. And uh, they, th those people who were already there were wonderful. They, they, you know, they took us as mentors, or they were mentors for us, and um, uh, they taught us you know, some of the ins and outs of uh, you know, what's important, what you have to do, and what you shouldn't do. And so th there was a very steep learning curve, and I, I think generally... We did learn very well uh, because we all got elected the next time. Or the same eight got elected again. So, yeah. Then I, I just became thoroughly uh, involved in 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 the whole council stuff. So, you know, so you're in retirement. You're thinking about further involvement. What was the area? that really drew your interest into politics? Was there some issue, some aspect that, that, that you really wanted to have an impact with? Well, it's more of a general okay. uh, concept. Um, I, I love Thunder Bay, and I, I felt that I still had lots to give. Uh, I have been involved in lots of community organizations. I, I think at the time I was the chair of the uh, Thunder Bay Regional Health Sciences Foundation. Um, I, I saw a lot of good things happening there. I saw other things in other committees that I was on. Other, I was on another foundation, uh, same kind of concept. And I thought, I, I, can, I can contribute. Uh, you know, I've got lots of people that I know and I, I think I can uh, make, uh, make an impact. So that, that's sort of the general motivation that I had mm -hmm. uh, after the people said well why don't you run and I thought okay what am I gonna why am I running right you have to ask yourself that yes <clears throat> that, and that's something I, I'm not sure that all people do and I, I said well I do I have some things I can give back to the community because I've had a wonderful life here and so now as a as a councillor mm -hmm. who sits on Thunder, Thunder Bay City Council, but yeah. you are elected in the Red River Ward. Yes. So how, what's the balancing act here? Like, how much do you advocate for the folks in your ward as opposed to what's best, say, for the whole city? How well, do you deal with that? that that's, a, that's a good question because I was elected by the people in my ward, uh, Red River Ward. And uh, my primary focus is to address their needs. And I try to do that as best as I can. Uh, I, I, I answer all my phone calls. I return all my phone calls. I, you know, I have ward meetings regularly. Uh, I listen to what the concerns are in my ward. And I advocate for stuff in my ward. Uh, you know, everything from roads to parks to uh, lighting on streets, uh, plug sewers and you know, uh, culverts and all of this sort of what you would think of as mundane stuff. But that's very important to either the individual or that street or that community. And uh, I take that uh, very seriously. And so I... I that's my primary focus. Not secondarily, but certainly uh, coincidentally with that, are city issues, obviously, because city issues affect the ward and vice versa. Yeah. And so I, I spent uh, 
maybe not an equal amount of time, but certainly considerable time on city issues as well. Now we talk generally at council, you know, on the night of council meetings, for example, on mainly uh, city issues. Uh, but the thing is that some of the city issues might be in my ward too. You know, I, I use the example, just the recent example of the high, of the high street wall, well, you know, which was a, a, an item that people, you know, uh, became very either emotional about or uh, said, oh, well, let's get it done, let's get it done. Uh, but we took a long time to mull that over. And uh, who's we? Like, how did that, how did <coughs> that work? Well, uh, the drive came from a couple of us, of course, but... Uh, At City Council? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But we worked um, closely with engineering because this was, this was their project. And they said, uh, okay, we've done all the engineering studies. Uh, actually, they did four studies, serious, um, everything from environmental to structural studies. And they said, at the end of the day, this thing is our number one priority to be replaced. Number one in, this, in the whole city. In the whole city? Yes. Oh my goodness. Number one. So um, we, we uh, talked about it extensively at council because it was a very expensive project. It's $2.3 million. To replace that wall Just right there by Hillcrest uh, Park. Exactly. That seems like uh, an inordinate amount of money, but uh, th that's what it takes because they have to tear down the whole thing, take down that part of Cornwall, Cornwall Street, which some people don't even know it's there. Yeah, the little, little curve there. there. That's got to be all rebuilt. So it has to be done uh, structurally sound and uh, by engineering standards. And that was the number. And so the council, you know, looked at some options and what, what else could we do? I'm sure you heard the talk about, can we put the same uh, blocks back there? And, uh, you know, is it feasible? What, how much more would it cost? So those are the kinds of discussions that was essentially a local issue, mm -hmm. but was a city issue too, because of, well, first the cost. Uh, it was going to impact High Street because it, High Street will be closed. Right, for a month. For, for months is right, all summer. You know, so that's an impact. That means that's going to affect other arteries in the city. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of thing that is, yeah, it's a, it's a local, in my case, a ward thing, but it affects the whole city and vice versa. That was a city issue that affects my ward. Mm -hmm. So that's where they tie in. And it, uh, that's often the way those kinds of things occur. No, there are specific things that, sure, they're ward issues, you know, like a park. Park needs redoing or a park needs uh, new uh, play structures. And, you know, I was lucky to get a couple last year. But, you know, if, you know the parks has a list of things that um, they have to do and in a certain sequence. Some are more important than others. You know, some of the equipment might be dangerous. Okay, you got to get rid of it, replace it. So those are the considerations that have to happen when you're making a decision as a ward councillor and as a city councillor. You know, I mean, yeah, we're, we're one and the same, but uh, you have to say, well, you know what? Maybe my issue is secondary to what's happening in Westfort or in Current River. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something more important. Well, hang on there. Mm -hmm. We need to take a short break and then we're going to get come back and see, you know, do we go into the corners to see <laughs> whose park gets uh, fixed up first? Be right back.